Hello, welcome to or welcome back to Dave's Techway, whichever way the situation may be. Like the title suggests, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to install the Vito V5 air cooler on the AM4 platform. We're also going to be doing some temperature testing. There will be links in the description below, the timestamps, and also some other links down there may interest you. Don't forget to do all that fun YouTube stuff on your way down the description box. Let's flip you over and we'll show you how to get this cooler installed. Alright, so here we go. We're going to be installing this one today. I'm going to show you how to get installed. Over here we have the heat sink itself or the tires. Here we do have the AM4 brackets. It's going to screw down into the AM4 back plate. Down here we have the thermal paste. And down here I got a little spreader just to spread it with. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know I like to spread my thermal paste out. That way I know I got good coverage and I got the appropriate amount. Here we have the ARGB fan that comes with it. Also right here we have the four little screws that attaches the AM4 brackets to the bottom of the heat sink. And right here we have two of the brackets or two of the mounting brackets or clips I guess you'd say. To mount the fan to the side of the heat sink. So let's go ahead and get started with this. Okay to start out with you need to start out with the installing the brackets. The brackets is for AM4. We need to install them onto the bottom of the heat sink. So I got the brackets here. Got the four screws as needed. Of the heat sink itself. These these brackets will go on two different ways. If you read the instruction manual for these brackets, the screws need to be in. They have three little notches inside each one of these. You need to make sure they're inside on the closest one on all four of them. Which I've already got mine set up. When installing these brackets, you need to make sure these long pointy ends is actually pointing in towards each other and not away from each other. Or they're both in the same orientation. If not, it will throw off the mounting screws for it. That is something to keep in mind. Since I got the brackets already just kind of laying there, we'll go ahead and put the four screws down into it. Go ahead and get the screw started in this one, just like so. And you want to leave that a little loose. That way if you need to, you can move it around a little bit to get that second screw started, just like so. Since I got both screws in and already started, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this one on down. And you don't need to go real tight, just like I say on most things, you know, about wrist tight. You know, you don't wanna, you ain't sealing against water, you ain't sealing against air or anything like that. Just nice and snug. Then we'll get the other one set back up here the way we need it. And just like we did the other side, we'll get these two screws put in. Now we need to get our motherboard over here. If you're building brand new and you don't have, already have a heat sink on your system, you're going to have these here brackets over here that you'll have to remove because this heat sink does screw right down into the back plate that comes with AM4. You need to remove these or you need to remove your stock heat sink if you're replacing your heat sink with one of these. So we uh, just take the screws out of them and you replace the, remove the plastic bracket and the screws. I would suggest keeping hold of these brackets because you never know what the future may hold. If you need to upgrade or maybe you go with an AIO on down the line or something. You may need these brackets again to be able to connect your new con uh, your newer solution to it. So you definitely want to keep a hold of the screws in the plastic plastic brackets. Now we need uh, now we need to apply the thermal paste. There is different schools of thought on this. But if you've seen any of my other videos, I do like to spread mine out. So I do have a little spreader here. Just put a little daub here in the middle. You now about the size of a rice grain or something like that. Maybe cook the size of rice. You know, it depends on who you listen to. That's why I spread mine out. That way if I do have too much, I can always take the excess off. And also I spread mine out. That way I know I have complete coverage over the CPU. So let me skip the rest of this and I will be back when I get done with this part of it. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. There may be a little bit of spots in there that the thermal paste ain't quite covering. But whenever that CPU heats up, it'll actually spread that out underneath the pressure of the heat sink. So I ain't too worried about it. I think it'll be alright. I don't know if you can read that with the way the lighting is or not, but there's a little piece of paper at the bottom that says please remove before installing, before in installation. So we're going to go ahead and pull that off. That's pretty important. If you don't pull that off ahead of time, you will most likely overheat your CPU, and that ain't a good thing. And with that being pulled off, you flip it over here. Make sure your screw holes line up on all four corners. 
which looks like it does. Now I do use a six inch extension bit. This is why I recommend to get you a long screwdriver or get you a six inch extension bit for this. Because these tall heat sinks. Start out, just turn it a couple of times. Over here on the opposite corner, and do the same thing. That's a couple of turns. Now that one didn't even start. Back leads pushing down too far on it. There we go. And you want to do this in kind of a cross pattern. Like I said, you ain't wanting to tighten down one before the other ones get started. You may have to move it around a little bit to line them up right or something like that. So you want to leave a little bit of play in them. All right, then we'll go back to this one. Give it a few more cranks here. Okay, go over this one. Give this one here a few more cranks. And we'll go up to this one. Give it a few cranks. Okay, then we'll go over to this one. And give it a few cranks. Yeah, that one's already pretty well tightened down. Just make sure it's snug. And again, you don't want to tighten these too much. You just, you know, make sure they're nice and snug. or just tight, pretty much. And that could use a couple extra turns. There you go. All right. Now that feels pretty snug to me. Feels all right. I think we'll be okay with that application right there. All right, next thing we got is your fan. And when you're putting your fan on it, if you're gonna put it on the side of your aim sticks, is, where your aim sticks is, you wanna make sure this bracket that holds up the fan motor is towards the heat sink. If you want to use it as an exhaust fan or pull the air through the heat sink, you want to make sure these brackets are facing away from the heat sink. But I would recommend to have these facing towards the heat sink with the fan on the side of the rim. That way it's an intake fan or it's a, it pulls it in through the fan and then through the heat, uh, heat sink. Would be my recommendation, but you could do it either way. They actually give you four of these little metal brackets for fans. So you could put one on each side of it if you like. But to me, it's unnecessary and it's just overkill. Okay, so to orient your fan, if you look at your motherboard, here's your CPU cooler. Up here is your fan header. So you want your cables from your fan to head this way. That way it's close to that fan header. As far as these little metal brackets go, they go in the inside hole of the fan, just like so, and like so. They just kind of go in there and hook. Okay, you put one on each side over here, just like so, like so. Then you put it against your heat sink the way you want it you pull this little metal clip back until it locks into place then you pull the one back on the opposite side until it clicks into place and that's pretty sturdy mouth that ain't too bad i think it looks all right like that but you want to make sure you get your cpu fan header here this one does have a four pin fan header to it and like i mentioned earlier your cpu fan header is right up here there's a little gray slot and right beside it, and normally on most motherboards, it says CPU header or CPU fan. So you need to take this four pin CPU header off your fan, line up the notches and slide it down on, just like so. I think you take a uh, zip tie or something, tie this cable back, make it look all nice and pretty, shorten it up some. It just looks nasty with the hanging out like that. As far as your ARGB header goes, it is daisy chainable so you can plug this into your motherboard and then this one here you can actually plug another ARGB into it for it can run off the same header or if you got an ARGB controller box or something in your system you may want to connect this up to that that way they all have the same coloration or however you set the colors up it's all the same that completely depends on you but if you have no other ARGB in your system right over here is my ARGB header which is a five five volt three pin header you line up the pin outlet pin outlets on it or you line up the pin outlay on it the way the pins is laid up and you just slide down on top of that ARGB header and like I mentioned you know depending on how your case and your system set up is how you're going to install this ARGB header but for this case, I'm just going to slide it right down there on the ARGB header. That's pretty well the installation of it. Let me get some tests done and uh, I'll see how it performs. And uh, I'll come back with the performance of it and see if it's actually worth the money or not in the conclusion to the video. All right, now since I showed you how to install this cooler, let's flip you over here and we'll show you the parts that make up the system. 
We'll also show you the four different air coolers that we used in today's testing. As far as the processor we used, we used the AMD Ryzen 5 5600G. The motherboard, we used the Gigabyte B550 DS3H motherboard. For the RAM, we used G-Skilled Rift Jobs 5 series, 16 gig, 2 8 gig sticks, dual channels running 3600 megahertz. For the storage in the system, we have the Silicon Power 512 gigabyte NVMe hard drive or SSD. To power the whole system, we have the EVGA 500BA 80 plus bronze certified non-modular power supply. And for the case, we have the Fractor Design Focus G Black. As far as the case goes, I did leave the two pre-installed fans in the front. I did add a 120 in the back. I think this is pretty indicative of what most people would be using in this price point. If you're looking to buy one of these coolers or using the stock cooler, you're on a budget. I think this is pretty indicative. It's pretty good pretty good airflow case for the money as far as the air coolers we used in today's testing we do have the stock wraith stealth cooler that comes with the 5600g i also put it against the ergo shadow max cpu cooler and we also tested the cooler master hyper t4 and of course we also tested the Petro v5 black cpu air cooler there's a portion that make up the system we tested with today and the four different air coolers we put against each other as far as the way I did my testing, I did use the iGPU on this processor. I had Heaven Benchmark looping in the background at 1080p. I also had Cinebench R23 running for the, for the 30 minute stress test. That way the iGPU and the CPU both was at 100% the whole time for the half hour test. Yes, most heat sinks like this, they do get saturated within 10 to 15 minutes. And then my testing, that's what I found out. About 10 to 15 minutes, they actually hit their top temperatures. But I did run all the tests for a half hour just to make it as fair as I could and just, just to verify that that was going to be the top temperature. As far as the components go, the only thing I did was I went in and enabled XMP profile. That way we was running at 3600 megahertz speed on the RAM. Everything else was left at stock. PBO was in was the one that was doing the auto overclocking for the CPU and the GPU cores. I even left the VRAM for the iGPU in this set of what it is out of the box. Cause I have a feeling this is where a lot of people are gonna be running this processor. Let's looking for an aftermarket cooler. I put some charts together. So let's flip over here and we'll look at these charts and see how this thing performs compared to these other coolers we tested in today's video. All right, here we go. We have the average temperature, which is in the orange. The max temperature is in the black. All these tests were run three different times. I took the averages. That's how I came up with these numbers. As far as the sock heat sink, the Wraith Stealth, the max temperature was 95.6. The average temperature was 93.3. The Shadow Max Cooler was 80.8 .8 on the max and 78.7 .7 on the average. The Vitro V5 was 71.1 .1 on the max and the average was 68.9. Hyper T4, the max was 69.8 and the average was 67.7. .7. One thing you guys need to keep in mind while we talk about these numbers, this is an unrealistic load. I had the CPU at 100%. I also have the GPU running 100%. 98% of the time, you ain't gonna be running your CPU or your GPU or both, in this case, if you're running an APU, at the max 100% at the whole time. This was a half hour test. That's a pretty good heat load on that, on the CPU. As you can tell by looking at the numbers, the Hyper T4 did pull ahead a little bit as far as temperature go, but there was only one or two degrees difference there. That could always be in the margin of error, even though I ran the test three different times and I took the averages from each of the three tests. So I don't think you could go wrong with this cooler. It does look a lot nicer. It is black with the ARGB fan on it. I don't think you can go wrong with this. By looking at what the stock heat sink does on this, I think it's pretty good. I think it'd be a pretty good deal for the for the price of this cooler. And of course, if you can keep the temperatures down on your CPU, the better PBO is going to do, and the better auto overclocking is going to do, and the more performance you're going to get out of your CPU. So I think this cooler is definitely worth the 25, 30 bucks that you're going to spend on this cooler. Don't forget to do all that fun YouTube stuff on your way out of here. You have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video or live stream.